There's a light in the sky, rising in the air. There's a feeling so strong. It's time to light the fire, like a bright shining light. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the House of Wellness. I'm Luke Darcy and I'm very happy to be sharing the couch as always with Joe Stanley, Rachel Finch and Heisey. Welcome guys. Hi, G'day guys. It is Hi. awesome to be here. Now as always we've got all bases covered on today's show. Joe, I want you to tell me how is lipstick supporting women's mental health? Yes well Darcy I do love a bit of lippy obviously and <laughs> while you blokes own November with Movember, yep. now us girls are claiming September as Liptember so I'll be telling you all a little bit about that later on. Yes, fabulous cause. And staying on the topic of women's health and well-being, we'll also be looking at the best care and nutrition during the second trimester of pregnancy. Plus, we'll be pumping iron. We're going to find out how to get more of the Mighty Mineral into your daily routine. And I'll be meeting a bunch of incredibly strong men who do it. Literally, you've got to see this, nice. guys. They are <laughs> humongous. I can't wait. <laughs> Boy, that, now, I have to say, House of Wellness has been a lot of fun for me this year. I've loved spending time with you guys. Never feels like hard work. Oh. Apart from Gerald at times, but yeah. uh, exhausting. <laughs> it is exhausting. <laughs> working, oh. our, working our way through that. But it's true, we are so lucky to do what we do and all have pretty diverse careers. I mean, Darcy, yeah. you've got about 17 jobs. That's <laughs> a problem when you have four kids, you need 17 <laughs> jobs to try and keep yeah. them all sort of alive. But yes. uh, need to get the work life. But I'm looking forward to this discussion work life balance. I think it's something we're all trying to get right, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, it's yeah. true. It is challenging. I feel like, particularly, I think you'll agree. Uh, Heinze, our job is sort of we're on 24-7, especially with social media. Yeah. And I think it's more and more important that we're finding that time to really switch off and find the space. I, mean, I think nine to five is, is a thing of the past oh, for totally. many people. Yes. And you just go and go. Mm. The phone is beeping. It's endless. Well, all jobs have their rewards along with their stresses and it's part of working life. However, if you're dragging yourself in, dreading each day or suffering major stress or health problems, it could be a sign that you're suffering from work burnout. Take a look. Yudan Shi has always been exceptional. She started high school when she was eight, graduated with her first university degree at 17 and was commanding a large salary in the tech industry before she was out of her teens. I was, um, you know, very driven. I was working seven days a week and those days I also didn't have family or it was just like all you do is just working. <laughs> um, I remember I woke up one day and my mom screamed and she's like, what happened? I'm like, what happened? And she goes, oh, the back of your hair is white. And I'm like, oh, and so I had a look, it was true. I think that was the first time I realised I was working too hard and I was only 20 years old, so that was ridiculous. <laughs> this was a huge warning sign for you, Dan. She knew things had to change. So I had my little banal in Shanghai, so then I decided to come to Australia so it would be easier here. In Sydney, Yu Dan worked hard to obtain all the traditional markers of success. She completed her master's degree, married, had children, and worked her way up to an executive role at a Fortune 100 company. For some reason, I just wasn't happy. When I got there, I was um, miserable. I was tired every day, and I had this beautiful office overlooking Sydney Harbour. And I remember I was envying the people outside the window because they're like under the sun, they were laughing, and here I am trapped in a boxed office. I, I didn't feel successful. I didn't feel happy. While Yudan tried to ignore those feelings, her body found a way of telling her something wasn't quite right. I was just finished another long day of business meeting and I remember the taxi was literally exiting the Sydney Harbour Bridge to the North Sydney Highway and I just felt so sick. I felt so much pain on this right side of my body and I feel like really nauseous. And I knew something was really, really wrong with me at that moment. So I told the taxi driver just to take me straight to the nearest uh, hospital and I blacked out. Yudan was rushed to hospital with a life-threatening gallbladder infection. Emergency surgery was the only way to save her life. The doctor said this condition normally happens um, to people who are much older than my age. And the explanation is stress, extreme stress. This was finally the wake-up call Yudan needed to take her stress management seriously, but was nervous to take the first steps. 
It felt like it came with the package. Like, aren't you meant to be stressed? Isn't that what we were taught all throughout our life? No pain, no gain. It's almost like a badge of honor for a lot of high achievers. So in the pursuit of success, I think I lost a lot of me. But this is actually quite normal. The reason I hit that breaking point, now I call defining moment, is not a crisis. It was actually a great opportunity for growth. All it was saying, it was part of me saying, hey, reconnect with me. Like, whose life are you living? Yudan looked to education for an answer. She earned another degree, this time in psychology, and eventually left her corporate career to start her own business coaching high-performing clients from all over Australia to help them reach their best potential without hitting the burnout she experienced. We are not taught how to reflect. <laughs> you know, we are a busy society, so um, we are always just do, do, do. And to me, if you start to understand both success and failure, that little setback is what makes life interesting. I'm so grateful for that period of dissatisfaction because it forced me to study, forced me to research. And when you can make sense of your own challenges, this is also when you can actually create meaning. Don't, don't be afraid of these little challenges because it's all about learning about ourselves and learning about how to live, right? We are not taught at school, so this is a great opportunity. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Everyone's striving for that work-life balance. Mm. We talk about it all the time. We want to achieve great things, but as we see with people like you, Dan, working too much in a job you despise, it's not worth the cost to your health or to your loved ones or any of that, I suppose. No, that's right. I don't know if you saw it a few years ago. There was an amazing article written by a palliative care nurse. It was called Top Five Regrets of the Dying. Yeah. Mm. And the number one regret for men, especially on their deathbeds, was wishing they hadn't worked mm. so much. Yeah, I think I saw something similar. Other wishes on that were staying in touch with friends and just simply letting yourself be happier. It's interesting we spend so much of our lives trying to gain things and get things and tick boxes about houses and things we own but on our deathbed that's the last thing we're thinking about and if there's anything that I think is the most important it's to not worry what other people think. Go mm, through life yeah. living and being you. Yeah, yeah, finding that perfect uh, blend of work-life balance is essential to living the best life we all want to live. And after the break, we meet an expert who can give us a few tips on exactly how to achieve this. Welcome back today. We're looking into work-life balance and how to avoid becoming burnt out at work. And here to tell us more, a workplace psychologist who helps empower people in their careers and beyond. Welcome, Dr Daniel Condon. Hi, Daniel. G'day, Luke. How are you going? I'm really well. Good. Thanks for joining us on the House of Wellness. First up, what exactly does a workplace psychologist do? So workplace psychologists work with uh, people and look at the human side of business. So rather than looking at profit and money, we look at people and support them with their mental health and well-being so that the profit and money can come later. So we mm. talk with people when there's pressure, stresses that can contribute to mental health problems. We also coach people for performance and uh, career progression and then we consult organisations to help them to set up a more healthy and safe workplace so that they can be more productive in the end. One mm. of the most important things. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. so before the break, sure. we saw you, Dan's story mm. and how her workplace stress and her burnout mm. was affecting all areas of her life, particularly her health, in a absolutely. very alarming way. Is she a typical case? And, and what are some of the other common causes? So Udan's had a combination of external factors, which mm. were workplace pressure, expectations and the norms of super long hours and super hard work. But there, she also potentially, and this is something that's very common, had internal factors, so mm. personality traits, which like perfectionism, super high work ethic, yep. and su mm. super high standards that can never be compromised. Mm. So when you have a combination of an external stressful place and also a person who's very perfectionistic and may have... Uh, not to say you, Dan, did, but there can be often self-esteem problems along with those personality issues. Those internal and external factors can combine and there can be a massive pressure mm. build-up. Mm. Is yeah. this an office-related condition or are, are certain people more at risk? So, you, Dan, work, did work in an office in a corporate-type white-collar environment, but burnout definitely doesn't discriminate. Yeah, mm. burnout is just... I, I work with nurses, I work with cleaners, um, builders, doctors, all types of people in all kinds of settings. It's really about the environment and the, yeah, the level of stress and pressure on the individual, as well as maybe what they're bringing to the table from their own personality, 
but it's not um, it's not just an office issue. It's How everywhere. can someone work out the difference between maybe experiencing work burnout? Mm or just working in a place that is not good or a little bit toxic? Mm. Sure, absolutely. So I guess burnout is the impact on the individual. The health suffers. Yep. Uh, people experience lack of, lack of energy, lack of motivation, lack of enthusiasm. So when it might just be a bit annoying and you're just looking at, OK, this is getting, getting on my nerves or whatever it might be, that's yeah. one thing. But when it starts to impact your sleep, your relationships at home, um, how you're feeling within yourself, so your mood can drop, you can feel stressed for no particular reason. That's when it crosses over into burnout. I had an interesting experience where I was convinced I had food poisoning. I left my place of work at the time, which is as a personal trainer. I got back to my apartment, felt like I've got food poisoning, went to the doctors and said, you don't have food poisoning, this is a panic attack. Wow. You're this is kidding. burnout, you're yep. exhausted. Wow. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it was very powerful. Yep, so often my, my clients who I see say, say that they've been to the hospital to check out their heart. So right. their heart wow. they feel very breathless and their heart goes really fast and they go to hospital. It happens again and again. It's amazing. That's how bad a panic attack can feel. Looking after yeah. those, uh, those vital signs. Yeah. What, in your opinion, constitutes as clocking off? Because, you know, yeah, a lot of us have sure. that 24-7 on feature with mm. work. Email access is open all the time. What do you think constitutes as that? So clocking off is really a blurring boundary these days, isn't it? So mm. the, the time between work where we're on and performing and home where we're meant to sort of rest and recharge with, you know, generally the people we love is mm. really blurring and um, it's actually blurring in favour of work. So clocking off is becoming something which isn't as clear and I think that the solution is drawing those boundaries. So it's about being assertive, drawing those clear boundaries within yourself first so I won't be on technology after a certain amount of time, I'll engage with, with my family or, or my friends at certain times and force those interactions so that you can sort of fight back against that blurring boundary and the encroachment of the workplace. Yeah, and it's hard because it, beca it can become so addictive, like we all love yeah, our no work, doubt, no we want to answer yep. emails, we want to keep sure. going, we want to mm. progress so it's like let's take a moment <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and breathe. And so so yeah. Yeah, Daniel, what, what advice can you give those watching the House of Wellness today to try and avoid getting to the point where you are burnt out? What are the daily things people can do? Yeah. So daily it comes to self-care type mm. principles of exercise and uh, you know doing things that you like and forcing that, that time in. But it also it's about communication in your workplace, yeah. talking to... Uh, if, I guess it's about warning signs, so if you notice the early warning signs within yourself, then it's very respectful and professional actually to communicate to your workplace rather than letting it get out of control. If a workplace then acts in a negative way, you know you've got a problem with a toxic kind of workplace, but if they respect um, what you've told them about your health, mm. then you can make a plan and work it through together. So it's a combination of looking after yourself, but also collaboratively doing it within within your workplace, not keeping silent. Because very often, like the pressures that you, Dan, faced, um, there's so much pressure and it's assumed that you'll just take on everything. Yeah. But mm. if you draw a line and say, you know, I'm, I'm struggling, need a bit of help, yep. reach mm. out and also get some professional support also. What if you're mm. that personality type, though? Because I well, always say, and I say mm, to my mm, daughter mm. who's 10, babe, you'd be a lot happier if you just lower your standards. No <laughs> <laughs> That's how I rule my yeah. life. Just bring it down a notch yeah. and then you're going to be more successful. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but how do you manage that personality type if you know that's you, if you know that you're a perfectionist? So I guess from a psychological point of view, personality is super strong mm. and it's quite fixed. Do you find that with your daughter it's hard to shift her? Which by saying that? Well, and yeah. she's inherited from me and her oh, right. father as well. You know, we have that kind of lifestyle mm. which mm. we aim for, you know, the best, but yep. that's not going to necessarily make you happy. Exactly, and something that you've learned through through your life experience, I yeah. guess, and maybe reduce those standards. We can do it ourselves, or again, we can, you know, if it's really stuck and we're seeing that we're our own worst enemy in the workplace or, you know, with our perfectionism, whatever it might be, really go and see a, a psychologist and have a talk about it, or your GP to get some perspective. Yeah. I'm selling my own services here. <laughs> <laughs> Great conversation yeah. about work-life balance. You can see we're all dialled in to uh, trying to achieve yeah. it ourselves. Thanks, Daniel, for coming in and Pleasure. helping us with that. Really appreciate it. Uh, coming up after the break, we look at a very colourful campaign for women's mental health, but next, Heinze gives us a show of brute strength, mate. Yeah, watch out. We'll sort of that as he goes one-on-one -on -one <laughs> with a true man of steel. Yes, welcome back to the House of Wellness. Well, Heinze, I do most of the heavy lifting oh, around here. here we go. <laughs> here we say. go. Pow. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> Look, mate, I've got to tell you, though, this week I'm going to prove you wrong. I checked out the competitive sport of strongmen, and believe me, these guys are doing more than just pulling their weight. Take a look. <laughs> Oh, 
Sam LaSurf is a living, breathing strongman. He competes in the sport, trains his clients in the sport, and today he's going to see if I'm cut out for it. Sam, for someone who's never heard of it, how would you describe strongman? It's basically just lifting up anything, anywhere, anytime. You've you just got to be able to lift, lift random stuff that you see. So traditional strength training is often quite linear, so you're just picking something up, pressing it or squatting it or, or using a leg press or something, where a strongman incorporates the whole body. So we're doing stuff that carries over into real life by walking with stuff, moving stuff, flipping stuff, putting stuff on, on high uh, platforms, all that kind of stuff, using your whole body in a functional way. Where do we start? We'll start with the Atlas Stones. You need to lift them over this bar. OK, how much is this weigh? That's 110 kilos. This one? 140. All right, show us how it's done. All righty. So you've got to get your hands nice and wide. Yep. Get under the stone, lifting the stone up into your lap. Oh. Hug it nice and tight to your <laughs> chest. And then you stand up. Oh. And dunk it over the bar. Wow. How big are we talking to be Australia's strongest man? Eddie Williams is Australia's strongest man currently and he's 180 kilos. 180 kilos. Yeah. And how heavy would he be lifting? Say one of those stones that we were looking at, how big is that stone going to be? The series he's looking at would be finishing at about a 220 kilo stone. Wow. You push cars, lift cars, pull trains, push trucks. What's the story there? It's all about spectacle, really. Strongman started as an entertainment sport, circus style. Yeah. And it actually goes all the way back to Highland Games and country folk in the old times wanting to get entertained. So they'd pick the biggest, strongest dudes, do the, the coolest looking stuff. So we figured, you know, these things require engines to move. Let's make a, a person do it. This is not only a fitness regime. Strongman competitions are held all over the world, with the aim being to just lift really, really heavy things. With events including Atlas Stones, the Frame Carry, the Conan Wheel, and the Tire Flip, which I'm about to attempt. The tire, how do you do this? Alrighty, so we're basically gonna get a nice deep squat. Yep. You're gonna sit yourself down and push forward into the tire while lifting up at the same time. Ooh. You're going to pop it up onto your knee and then push it all the way over. I'm doing that. Yep, you are. Off you go. All right. Here we go. Sam. Legs apart. Drive forward into the tire and up. Oh. There you go. Knee under. Kick it up. Oh. There you Mate. go. Nice work. That was great fun. Yeah. How many more times of that? Uh, 30. <laughs> I will probably have to do a few more tyre flips to get to Sam's level, but it's not hard to see why he loves this. You walk out of the gym and every time you feel like you want to share what you've just done with people, because not only is it releasing those endorphins, but you've done something most people don't think they could ever do. Did you ever think you could flip a 250 kilo tyre? I tire never and... would have thought I could flip a 250 kilo yeah. tyre. So you're walking out of the gym going, I just did something most people won't ever do in their life. Exercise is only half the battle in the contest for the world's strongest man. Sam's daily diet includes 300 grams of yoghurt, half a kilo of mincemeat, pasta, two steaks, and a few packets of noodles with roast veggies chucked in for good measure. There's a lot of protein involved and there's a lot of food involved, so to get big and strong, you won't find many guys eating short of 5,000, 6,000 calories a day. It's certainly easy to work up an appetite doing this, but the workout isn't over. In true showman tradition, Sam has saved the best nice. for last. Nice work. No, you're all... next. Hey, what? Oh, oh, me down. Oh, put me down. Put me down. Oh, oh. Mate, well done. I think, though, I'd rather be carried than doing the carrying. <laughs> Far out. That was quite fun. <laughs> Wow. It's legit. I, I, I know we laugh. <laughs> but they're very strong. He could have lifted me for days. Five, <laughs> five to 6,000 calories of food a day. They must do nothing but exercise and eat. And cook. And they cook yeah. in bulk. And he was describing to me how he fries up all the steak at once. He does all the veg. He packs it into his containers, puts it into lunch boxes. Yeah, wow. <laughs> it's hilarious. And how little did you look next to him? <laughs> I know. My legs are lemon. <laughs> <laughs> You're a giant. Normally. But well, there you, you go. Like...
I know. It was so <laughs> fun. It. But some of them are quite professional sportsmen. I mean, they mm. come from wrestling and weightlifting backgrounds. It's pretty incredible. It's become yeah. a big sport around the world, the world's mm. strongest man. Maybe something for you, Heinz. Mate, might... I reckon I can do those calories. I'll yeah. slam them down. I'll be carrying you both in no time. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of men of steel, our man behind the health bar, Gerald, is always pumping some iron. Hello, Gerald. Hello, Darcy. In fact, you can see now why Hansi and I have got some weights up the back here. So when the segment breaks, we go and do a bit of work and he needs it. I want to talk today about muscle wellness and particularly iron. And that's what I like a man talking about, iron, this type of iron. And a lot of us know that a lack of iron leads to lethargy mm -hmm. and feeling really tired. What exactly is it doing for our body? It's an essential mineral, um, Rach, which means we don't really survive without adequate levels of iron. And mm -hmm. it's more important for both men and women to realise that they need adequate levels of iron in their body to carry oxygen as to, within red blood cells. So therefore, for energy, for vitality, for concentration, for immune function, iron is so important. And it's available in both animal and plant sources. Mm. I feel I hear a lot of people talk about it. It's quite common, isn't it? Yes, it's the most common nutritional deficiency in the world, about a third of the world's population. And wow. in Australia, up to 5%, we think, are deficient or insufficient levels of iron to adequately go about their health and wellness. So what groups, then, would be most at risk? Bearing in mind, we just said how important it is. Those people who require energy, so athletes, mm -hmm. um, people who require concentration, people who find that he uh, wounds don't heal in a reasonable amount of time, mm. Um, pregnant women need iron. Uh, all these people need adequate supplies. Basically of everyone. Red yeah, it's, <laughs> and really, we often don't know. Blood donors, yeah. and the beauty about blood do don donation is that they'll measure your iron each time. So it's a handy thing to have checked out. Let's talk about the symptoms. We mentioned tiredness, feeling fatigue. What are some of the other signs and symptoms? Poor concentration. Um, an inability to just get up and go. And often we don't look at the underlying issues. That we just think, oh, I'm, I'm tired, maybe I don't get enough sleep. Yeah. But if you don't have sufficient iron in your blood, your red blood cells, mm. you will not be able to produce the energy that we, we require to function. And of course, we're really passionate about getting irons and a lot of vitamins and minerals from our food sources. Yes. Red meat, spinach, nuts are really good sources. What other food groups are important for iron? There's a number and there's plant-based iron and, and as well as animal-based iron. And when you have both together, actually the, the animal iron actually helps the plant iron be absorbed. Ah. So it's good to have them together. As well as fresh fruit and veg because you need vitamin C to help absorption of iron. So there's mm -hmm. no point having it if it's not absorbed mm. and that's what having a sensible food portion of both will help. One will help the other. And supplementation? Very important and you need a supplement which obviously is well absorbed mm -hmm. with some vitamin C to help the absorption. One that's not going to constipate you, which is often a challenge with iron no supplements. One likes that. No, it's not comfortable. <laughs> and and as well, you need often good supplements have some B group with them, and that helps the energy component too. I understand. And who would benefit from this type of product? I mean, I would assume everyone you were speaking. Pretty well, adolescence rate, people growing. Um, women of childbearing age because of menstruation, athletes, very important, blood donors, and those with absorption issues, like people with celiac who don't absorb nutrients from their gut all that well. All of those people are probably beneficial to taking iron. We are so lucky to have you. Thank, Thank you, you, lovely. And the A to Z of vitamins is brought to you by Go Healthy, New Zealand's number one premium supplement brand, now available in Australia. Welcome back to the House of Wellness and Joe. We've got some very good news for olive lovers. Oh, that's right, Das. Well, one of my favourite things to do is cook a beautiful dish using olive oil or I love making a platter for my friends using loads of delicious olives. Unlike some other indulgences, they're... The great news is they're very good for you. And here to tell us more, welcome Health and Nutrition Manager from the Olive Wellness Institute, Sarah Gray. Hello, how are you? Yeah, I'm really well and I'm happy to talk about olives because I just love them. So we know that olives and olive oil are really fantastic fantastic for lowering bad cholesterol and for preventing cancer and lowering blood pressure and they're packed with antioxidants but of course there's plenty of goodness in the olive leaf as well so what does olive leaf contain that makes it so great for us 
Well, it's got two main antioxidants, both of which are very difficult to pronounce. Okay, so there's... I won't try. <laughs> <laughs> so there's oleuropine and hydroxytyrosol. Mm -hmm. But the wonderful thing about olive leaf extract is that it has about 15 or 10 to 15 different types of antioxidants inside. So the natural leaf is rich in antioxidants and by capturing those in the bottle of olive leaf extract, you've got a really huge abundance of antioxidants that are really beneficial for health. And what are the other active components in there? They've got even harder to pronounce names. <laughs> I <love that>. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I won't go through the individual names, but they are all unique olive antioxidants. So it's a good question because they're not antioxidants we find every day in the diet. We actually mm. only find some of them uniquely in the olive leaf itself. Wow. So I'm a huge fan of the Mediterranean diet. So beautiful fish and, and grains and lots of olive yep. oil and o olives of yep. course but how else can we include this in our daily intake? Yeah so olive leaf extract is something that you can take daily so um, every day we're exposed to different types of toxins so whether it's pollution or the environment or stress or all sorts of different things and our body develops free radicals and they mm. cause damage that can long term lead to things like health conditions or other diseases so by having a dose of olive leaf extract every day you're giving your body an extra antioxidant boost and as I said before they're only found in olive leaf extract mm. some of these antioxidants so by having this supplement, it gives your body that additional edge to try and overcome illness, especially in the winter months. Oh, it makes sense why it's become so popular. But because of that, there's many products out there. How do we know that we're choosing a good one? Well, there's three sort of main things I normally say to people because it can be overwhelming at the shelf when you're mm. selecting an olive leaf extract. Yes. So the first is choose a product that's Australian made and grown and that will enable you to have a product that's very rich in natural antioxidants because it's locally produced and it's fresh. The second thing would be on the label you can see whether it's produced from fresh or dry leaf. Okay. Yeah, so if you have a look for fresh leaf products that's a better option. Some independent research has shown that fresh leaf products give you a higher antioxidant level mm -hmm. than dry leaf. And the third thing is you know, it's a natural remedy so you want to reap the benefits of consuming something natural. So you don't want to consume a product that has used alcohols or chemicals okay. or solvents in its yeah. production. So try to choose a brand that uses um, very minimal um, chemicals or artificial components in the production method. That makes perfect sense. I yeah. love my olive leaf. I love my olives, especially when they come in martinis. So <laughs> thank you so much, Sarah. No problem. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> From the health benefits of olive leaf to delicious apples, here's Zoe with a guilt-free dessert. <laughs> If it's true you are what you eat, then you are definitely going to want to try my chai spiced apple crumble with yogurt cinnamon. It is amazing. So let's start with the crumble. This crumble has oats in it. Now I'm a big fan of oats in the diet. They contain something called beta glucan, which is brilliant for our digestive system. I'm using almond meal, and then we've got the coconut in there. All of these are beautiful, good fats. They contain protein. And as we know about protein, it's satiating, but it's very, very slow releasing. The sweet element is the dates. So you just want to chop your dates up. And then the chai spice. Oh, these spices are just beautiful. Cardamom, cinnamon, all these aromats that are beautiful for you because they're high in anti-inflammatories. I'm gonna get my hands dirty, pop that on the tray and then into the oven. Now, while the beautiful crumble is baking, I'm gonna start on my apples. So I've already got a couple of apples cut up in my bowl. And the other thing I'm going to actually add is marine collagen. The benefit of having marine collagen in your diet, it builds the natural collagen that you have in your body. So it's really good for someone who might want to reduce premature aging, like me, as a 41-year-old, I'm wanting to maintain good skin. I have my honey, just to just add that little bit of sweetness, and my water. I'm gonna pop this on the cooktop, probably about 10 minutes, and then we can start the layering process. Now it's time to put it all together and then layer this. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the yogurt, some of the apple, and a little bit of the crumble, and just keep repeating it till the glass is full.
Welcome back. Great new campaign is about to kick off in Australia, which is all about promoting and supporting positive women's mental health. Great cause. Yes, absolutely. We've been focused on the crucial area of men's mental health in recent weeks, which is super important, but it's now time to give the girls a go. <laughs> Women across the nation are being asked to pop on some colourful lippy throughout the month of September and help out a great cause. You don't have to have all the answers to have a conversation. Since its beginnings in 2011, not-for-profit organisation Batia has been encouraging young people to share their stories of mental illness. And they have an interesting story behind their name. So Batir is the name of an elephant from Kazakhstan and Batir the elephant could speak human phrases. So Batir spoke up to 20 phrases in Russian. Um, I don't quite know exactly how, but it did and he was able to speak. And so I guess giving voice to the elephant in the room is our tagline. So what better than an elephant that actually had a voice? We at Batia have other young people that come in and share their experiences of lived mental ill health. And by sharing their stories, we hope that it encourages other people to get out there and seek help if and when they need to. And with five out of every 30 Australian students suffering with a mental health issue without seeking support, Batia has become an important addition in schools, universities and workplaces in five Australian states. At Batia we aim to smash the stigma around mental health and show young people that it's OK not to be OK and that there is help out there. Batia acts as a bridge between the individual and the service. There are a lot of mental health services out there to support young people, but a lot of them don't know that they exist. And how did she respond in the end? Um, in 2017, Batia paired with the campaign Lip Timber, and their donations have assisted in delivering Batia programs to young women ever since. Through the support from Lip Timber, Batia has been able to deliver a range of programs to young women. And so through the support from Lip Timber, last year we delivered 40 high school programs specifically for young females, which means that around 4,500 young girls experienced a Batia program. What about some of the ways that their friends showed support or the ways that they showed support to their friends? We also, through the money, were able to deliver three Being Heard programs, which means that 21 young women learned how to safely and effectively share their stories. And what that involves is a young facilitator going into a school and running not only an honest conversation around mental health, but a really fun conversation. And we get them really involved in activities. Within that program, we also have two lived experience speakers share their stories. And so in the audience, we have these young women hearing stories from young people they relate to and connect to, and they're speaking about their experiences through high school. So it's relevant to their age group. And so to have a campaign like Lip Timber supporting what we do, um, not only says that what we're doing at Batia is working and it's valuable, but it also means that young women out there are getting Batia services and they're learning who they can reach out to if they're struggling themselves and are going to run our community one day and so supporting them to be able to set the tone and the culture for what our conversations need to be around mental health is a really important message to support. Liptember is continuing their support of Batia's goals in their 2019 campaign. If you're interested in supporting Liptemba or in turn Batia or any of the other organisations, you can jump down to Chemist Warehouse and buy some lipstick and rock it throughout September. And if people ask you about why you're wearing such vibrant lipstick, tell them that it's important to support women's mental health and mental health in general. Definitely rocking some pink come September, I think. Oh. I love the bright lipstick and last yeah. year Lip Timber was able to reach more than 5.2 million Australian women and encourage them to start a conversation. That's exactly right, Joe. And just like with the men's mental health, the key is talking, the communication, supporting each other and raising that awareness on mental health issues nationwide. And yeah. I reckon blokes should get behind it as well. I reckon one day, Das, Gerald and I should don some yeah. lippy for a segment, an yeah, entire segment not? to bring awareness to this because I think we could be doing more mm. for it as well. Yeah, Good call. Uh, happy to do it. I'm bagging pink. You're going pink, <laughs> yep. yeah. And I think it's uh, you, no problems there, mate. That's okay. all yours. <laughs> but when you've got a, oh, a 14 year old daughter yeah. and you know, conversations with the boys is, is challenging, but trying to connect with your 14 year old daughter mm. in the space, it's uh, you know, really powerful to have these conversations open up. So. Oh, absolutely. I just remember being a teenager myself, and you would remember too, Rach, how we put so much pressure on ourselves mm. to be something better than we actually are. We just have this image. It was like we were talking perfectionism mm. earlier today. Mm. That, you know, we think that we have to be a certain way. We compare ourselves to everybody around us and we think they're doing so much better than we are mm. when really that's not the, 
fact. Yeah. We just need to accept ourselves for who we are. Absolutely. We and are enough. Exactly. Are. Yeah. And little do we know at that time, we're so influenced, mm. easily influenced. So to have, you know, causes like this is just amazing. And we say this every time on um, the House of Wellness, but it's a different era now, isn't it, when you're actually comparing yourself in mm. real time, you know, through social media, you never not, uh, you know, able to see what everyone else is doing. So it's a, it feels like a more challenging time for teenage girls than it's ever been. Well, it's now they've true. removed the likes, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's getting better. Yeah, that's yes. a step. So do make sure you go and get some bright red lipstick at Chemist Warehouse for Liptember this September. Now, last week we looked at how to stay happy and healthy in the lead-up and beginning of pregnancy. Now we turn to the second trimester. Rach, was that a magical time for you? It actually <laughs> was, because the morning sickness disappeared at around 15 weeks, and when I entered the second trimester, I felt so good. I was able to eat broccoli and Brussels sprouts again. Lucky you. Then I, wel <laughs> <laughs> then I welcomed, right. yeah. then I welcomed the up. leg cramps and uh, the nightmares. Oh, so I went right. from one to the next. <laughs> but for many women, the middle three months is when you bid goodbye to feeling tired or sick and say hello to your growing bump and feeling so much better. In your second trimester, a lot will change. Um, you, usually you'll find you have a, a lift in your energy levels. I just found that the symptoms just change. You lose one, you gain one. Yeah. yeah. So for me in the second trimester, I've, I've been quite good, been able to stay awake. But at the same time, I'm staying awake with heartburn. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think I survived for about six weeks in the first trimester on McDonald's. Mm. Like it, I would yeah. have McDonald's most days. Mm. Yeah. And then I just, every time, if it was, if it was gonna stay down, I was just gonna eat it. Yeah. yeah. And then I just swore that in the second trimester, I would just make up for it. And sure enough now, yeah. all I want is gold kiwi fruit and broccoli. Iron count dropped at around like in the second trimester, so I'm trying to, I've got my iron supplement, but I'm also trying to have green leafy vegetables yeah. and some red meat a couple times a week and mm. that kind of thing. Um, because you do feel it, like you feel it when your iron's you low. You do, don't you? Like, You're tired enough. With exactly. Like, yeah. so, so calcium and iron are very important in your second trimester because calcium, you need to um, have that to create healthy, strong bones, brain health, and just the growing health of your baby. With iron, it's also very important because you need to pass that blood onto your baby who is growing. And then it's also really important in your postpartum when you give birth and you do lose quite a lot of blood. So it's really important the iron levels are very high to counteract that. At the gym I get some funny looks, but I think that's because I look funny. <laughs> <laughs> You wouldn't do it if you knew you couldn't, if you felt you couldn't. Yeah. You yeah, sort of need exactly. to um, listen to your body and make sure um, you're just sort of modifying your exercise as you go along. My friend with her second pregnancy, she had gestational diabetes and she was telling me that her daughter needs to be tested for diabetes. So that kind of worries me because I, th I hate the thought that my body has done something to then yeah. pass it on to my child. So women can reduce their risk of gestational diabetes by eating a really well-balanced, healthy diet and making sure they exercise as well. So my tips for a stress-free pregnancy, uh, just to really listen to your own body. Also build your support network. So making sure you've got a really good doctor that you can trust, you can always go to with advice and they're happy to help you and they really understand, you know, your previous health history because I think that's very important as well. Time for a break. Looking forward to Rach serving up her ultimate breakfast bowls next. Yum! <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> Breakfast is my favourite meal. It's the one that sets you up for the rest of the day. I'm going to show you how to make these three delicious, nourishing breakfast bowls that don't take forever to prepare. First up, one of my go-tos, a berry smoothie bowl. Frozen berries and bananas into the blender. Add avocado and some almond milk. And then blend until smooth. Into a bowl and time to decorate. Slice banana and strawberries blackberries and blueberries, pepita and sunflower seeds, plus cacao nibs and coconut, and berry smoothie bowl done. Next bowl is overnight oats. In a jar with oats and chia seeds, add turmeric, almond milk, and yogurt. 
shake and put into the fridge overnight. When ready to eat, put into a bowl and decorate with berries, pepita seeds and mint. For more sweetness, you could add honey or maple syrup. Overnight oats, done. Finally, Mexican macro bowl. Add to pre-cooked rice some lime juice, chopped coriander and parsley, then mix. Decorate with tomato, avocado, boiled egg, jalapeno and lime. Mexican macro bowl, done. Three different healthy bowls to kick off your day. Oh, well played, right? That's looks incredible. When are you going to cater for us? Oh. You've never brought us a feed You've yet. You've never brought me anything. Actually, no, I lie. Oh, ah, yeah. You, you, you cook for us. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. You're uh, good. I love breakfast, my favourite meal of uh, the day, just about. I'm yes. a porridge uh, fan. First oh, up. Very yeah. Melbourne of you. Yeah. Easily pleased. Yeah. Easily pleased, yeah, simple. Uh, I love eggs because yep. they're so full of protein, of course, and energy. But how about I love avocado with Vegemite on toast? Yum. That is such a good combination. What is that? Underrated veggie, good butter, yeah. tomato, amazing. Oh, so you're our resident expert with food. You've uh, written ten cookbooks or and counting. Oh, I've what? got a little bit of a hack for people because everyone thinks breakfast food has to be cereal or toast or something cooked. If you're short on time, make double dinner and you can have oh, leftovers yeah. from dinner for breakfast. This morning I had a beautiful beef curry and roasted pumpkin in my hotel around for the corner. breakfast. I love and it. I loved it. No, I no. love dinner for breakfast. Yes. It's my favourite. Well, sometimes I have breakfast for dinner. I don't oh, mind eggs on toast. We're getting <laughs> out of control at the House of Wellness. I'm worried for viewers. I, I think on that note, time for us to wrap up. Uh, you can find all the info you need on our website. Anything on today's show, go to houseofwellness.com.au. Don't forget to tune in to our radio show every Sunday. And as always, thanks to our good friends at Chemist Warehouse. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> What have you had for lunch today? <laughs>